from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, March the 25th, 2021. Israel's Central Elections Committee published the final results of the country's national elections, which shows no clear path for the formation of a coalition. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party, having won 30 seats, Shas 9, United Torah Judaism 7, the Religious Zionism Party with six for a total of 52 seats for the Netanyahu bloc, which is not enough for the required majority of 61. Even if Naftali Bennett's Yamina Party, which has seven seats, were to join it. Now, the bloc of Netanyahu opponents has a total of 57, with Yair Lapid's Yeshatid Party having 17 seats, Benny Gantz's Blue and White with eight, Labor with seven, Yisrael Beitenu with seven, the Joint Arab List is also included in this block with six seats, the New Hope Party with six, and Merits with six as well. Again, for a total of 57, not enough for the needed 61. Now, the Arab Party Ram lost one seat to Merits overnight, but its four remaining seats still put it in a position of power if it chooses to join with one of the blocks. You can tune in for more on the situation as Shahar Azani speaks with political analyst Kobe Cohen right after this newscast. Now, the fact that the Labour Party received seven seats means that for the first time ever, a reform rabbi is set to be a member of Israel's Knesset. Gilad Kariv was number four on Labour's slate. He leads the reform movement in Israel and is a veteran advocate for religious pluralism in the country. He has run in Israeli elections for almost nine years, but never made it into the Knesset. And upon hearing results Tuesday from the first exit polls, Kariv tweeted the Shehechayanu prayer, uttered to mark a special occasion like something happening for the very first time. The United States Senate voted yesterday to confirm Dr. Rachel Levine as Assistant Secretary of Health, making her the first known and openly transgender federal official to be confirmed by the Senate. Levine, who is Jewish, previously served as health secretary for Pennsylvania, leading its response to the coronavirus pandemic. And before that, she served as the state's physician general. Renowned filmmaker Steven Spielberg will donate his Genesis Prize to Jewish and non-Jewish groups working to promote racial and economic justice. The foundation of the prize, which recognizes outstanding professional achievement, contribution to humanity, and commitment to Jewish values, said today that this year's recipient will match the $1 million prize with his own money to benefit 10 organizations among the Jewish groups, the Jews of Color Initiative, Dayenu, a Jewish call to climate action, and the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism. Spielberg said Judaism and Jewish history begin with two narratives, Genesis and Exodus, stories about creation and liberation from oppression, about the discovery of the moral voice and of human dignity. From these accounts, he said, come the ethical precepts commanding us to work for a more just and equitable world. Israel and Bahrain are partnering in the medical field. Israel's embassy in the Gulf Kingdom tweeted of the new collaboration by Sheba, the largest medical center in Israel, and Salmania Hospital, the largest medical complex in Bahrain. The two parties agreed to exchange cooperation in the fields of medicine, training, innovation, and research, adding that relations between Israel and Bahrain make the region better for everyone. The American Jewish Committee welcomed what they called another milestone of the new era of peace in the Middle East. And Bahrain's ambassador to the United States, Abdullah Al Khalifa, released a Passover message for the newly formed Association of Gulf Jewish Communities, or AGJC, today, speaking of the shared bond and intertwined ancestry between the Abrahamic faiths, 
Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, and of the dawning of a new era following the historic Abraham Accords. At this high holy time for us all, with Passover, Easter, and Ramadan approaching, we three peoples all take stock in that very history and those shared values. Like never before in history, the Jewish people need only look a few miles to see markets of opportunity, collaborators for shared challenges, and neighbors as friends, friends holding out their hands, offering unprecedented hope and opportunity. Former Ambassador of Bahrain to the U.S. and board member of the AGJC, Ambassador Huda Nonu, told JBS that the Jewish community in Bahrain is very appreciative to the ambassador for his Passover greeting, which he recorded specially for the association. She said this is very much aligned with His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's vision of interfaith engagement. Ambassador Al Khalifa, she said, is a close friend of the Jewish community, both in Bahrain and in the United States. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, March the 25th. At 7 o'clock, it's Talmud study. At 8, the late Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs explains how the Jewish people are the people of the book. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with kosher cookbook author Helen Nash on the Chaim. At 10, Cantor Laura Bresnik, Reverend Bidi Stork, and Dr. Hiba Al Khatib discuss how Judaism, Christianity, and Islam view the stranger in the past and today. And coming up next, Shahar Azani speaks again with political analyst Kobe Cohen, who shares his insights and expectations regarding the current political impasse in Israel. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, March the 25th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.